Greetings. It's time for another teardown and this time it's an MVP 260 PSI 12 volt air compressor and torch. Well I say 260 PSI, I only managed to get 215 PSI out of it. I had it connected up to a half litre pop bottle sitting inside a 150 litre water butt, as you do of course, and well, see for yourself. So here we are with a dead compressor to tear down. The motor still works. But as you can see, it doesn't provide any air. Torch still works, either in full brightness or flashing mode. So let's see what's inside. That unclips, six screws, and it comes apart pretty much like that. Inside we have obviously the compressor, we'll take a closer look at that in a second. Back of the switches, the flash circuit, the lamp. I don't know what the wattage is because the writing's worn off on here. It's probably either a 12 or 21 watt bulb or something like that. I don't know. Doesn't matter now. Some water's got into that which explains why the flasher isn't working 100%. It's just going bright dim, bright dim instead of on off, on off. Yeah, the compressor. 280 PSI on the generously rated pressure gauge, which I should be able to undo like this. Here's the guts of the pressure gauge, and all it is is a flat length, basically flattened tube, the end soldered off. That connects into this connection here and as you get air pressure building up in here so it'll try to expand and straighten out and as it straightens out up goes the gauge simple Next up we have the compressor. Obviously there's the motor, it's pretty obvious what that does. As that spins, it drives this piston. Up and down, up and down. At the bottom are two valves. This one, which is normally covered up, is the one which lets air out of the piston and down towards the tyre or air bed or pop bottle, whatever it is you're pumping up. This one, when it draws up, pops in to suck air in. So it's a one-way valve. There's two one-way valves. This one pulls that way, this one pulls that way. Let's take a closer look. That's the motor and gearbox taken off. Here's the piston. You can see there's just a rubber seal around the edge. Nothing much to it. It's like a much smaller version of what you find in the car. Then you've got the cylinder itself. And here we have the valves. This one has already popped out. That popped out when I ran the thing underwater. And what it consists of 
is a small black round ball that sits up under there. That ball is held in place by that spring and that spring is held in by this cap. Normally it's like that. If the pressure gets too much it pops out. I would show you the little black ball, but I've lost it. It'll be similar to what we've got in the intake valve. This piece is normally held down where the metal's been crushed down. Then we have the spring. Then we have the valve. This valve is slightly different. The valve, the outlet valve, is a round ball. This one is like a semicircular ball with a round set, with a round ridge. Now, to give you some idea of the air pressure involved, when you heard the compressor change note is because it will force this out through that hole. Which is presumably where it lost its edge. It looks like plastic, it actually feels like very hard, it's quite hard rubber. So obviously if the pressure does get really, really high, it is possible for this to find its way out through there. So that's how a simple compressor works. Let's take a look at the flasher. Here it is. 12 volts in, 12 volts output to the bulb. There's no ground connection. Okay, so here's the circuit diagram. We'll ignore the voltage drop of the bulb just to make things easier. Assuming the lamp is off initially, we'll apply 12 volts, C1 will instantly charge up through D1. So the C1 goes up to 12 volts, there's a voltage less than 12 volts, in fact around about the 8 volt mark, sitting between R2 and R3 and going into the base of Q1. C2 meanwhile is charging up through R1. That's taken a lot longer than C1 because C1 didn't have a resistor, so C2 is charging up. Once that goes beyond the 8 volt mark, Q1 is going to turn on. Q1 turns on, that turns Q2 on, that turns the light on. Now that's effectively short circuiting the supply now, but luckily we've got D1 in the way. So C1 doesn't short out instantly. C1 will discharge now through R2 and R3, bringing the voltages back down. C2 will take slightly longer to discharge because that's going through R1, R2 and R3 on its way down. But once that discharges as well, Q1 turns off, Q2 turns off, power flows back through D1 and charges up C1 straight away, and the cycle repeats. That's how the flasher works. Teardown complete. Thank you for watching.